Joanne Smallman has had more than her fair share of problems in her 47 years. She was born with cerebral palsy and has learning difficulties. She now has cancer and serious mental health issues. And she also lives in some of the poorest housing in the poorest pocket of Britain's most deprived area, Jaywick. If we was to live here another winter, if we don't like get out in the next couple of weeks, we wouldn't survive another winter and he would die. It was really harsh last year. Jaywick has been officially the most deprived area in the UK for around a decade. What that means is it's home to disproportionately high numbers of people with myriad problems, high numbers of people on benefits with few skills, but also with mental and physical health issues. The challenges are enormous. Marry that to a chronic shortage of housing and what you have in pockets of Jaywick are extremely vulnerable people living in appalling conditions, some in houses simply not fit to live in. And yet rent of around £500 a month still going to the landlords through housing benefit. In the last few years, Joanne's life has been marked by dramatic decline in her health, her ability to cope and in her home, which she says has seen sewage come up through the sink and a rat infestation lasting nearly two years. We filmed these pictures. Pest control confirmed they were rats. I know it is in a disgusting state and uh, I used to be so house proud, but like most days I don't even have the strength to get out of bed because my husband tries to do everything for me. But now because, because of the rats, it is affecting and happened to the car to me all by himself, it is affecting his mental health. So he's sunk into a depression like me. And I guess we've both given up on life. We don't give a toss anymore whether we live or die. Joanne has lived in this house for nearly four years. The rent, paid through housing benefits straight to her landlord, is nearly £500 a month. We can't wash up, we have to boil the kettle. And then it's still risky when we wash up because we've got raw sewage coming up through the sink. She says for lengthy periods they've been without heat and hot water. Broken windows haven't been fixed. And in May 2018, the then local MP stepped in to help after Joanne and her husband ended up sleeping on the beach because the rat infestation became so severe. But it was another year before the council issued the landlord with this prohibition order in June declaring the house unfit to live in, with several serious hazards identified, including structural problems and fire risks caused by rats eating through wires. We approached Joanne's landlord, but he declined to comment. It's just a horrible situation. It is embarrassing. I get called names. Tramp. Do you accept that part of the problem, I suppose, is that you two can't manage on your own? You can't keep the place... Do you accept that that's part of the problem or not? No, most days I'm on top of it. And then if I have a setback and I'm too weak and I can't get up and Daniel's in one of his depressive modes, then unfortunately it just gets left again. Like many of the families living in this part of Jaywick, Joanne accepts she can be difficult to help. It doesn't stop a network of volunteers trying. Andy White is a local resident who helps advocate to the authorities for people like Joanne and her husband. If you have a council that creates an environment where there's not going to be any enforcement of regulations, you attract bad landlords. If, if you want to make easy money, you come to Jaywick, you buy a house for 60 grand, you rent it out, you'll get housing benefit every month and you don't have to do anything. This house is not derelict, it's someone's home. Talk to anyone in difficulty in Jaywick and they'll talk about Danny Sloggett. After a spell in jail as a young man, he's now determined to help people who live on the very margins. There's lots of properties like this. This is not the only one. There's many properties that have been neglected for many, many years. He says the house hasn't had proper windows for nearly two years. We're told the tenant is extremely vulnerable. The rent, around £500 a month, paid mainly with housing benefit. Danny, what about those people who would look and say, you know, it's up to the people who live in these properties, they should do more to look after them? People who are unsympathetic. I think these people should put themselves in the shoes of the people that are in these houses. These people are very vulnerable through 
domestic abuse or through mental abuse or through being hurt as children, who don't have parents that support them, who don't have jobs, who don't have driving licences, who can never ever progress in life. But if you look at people that are saying these things, they're people that are living in two up, three down houses with jobs and a very comfortable life, with mums and dads that ban them out every time they get into trouble. Now come on, it's two sides to look at everything. We just need to basically make sure everyone's treated like a human being. It's the 21st century and it is England. So you lived here for how long? Then, in this 21st century England, we meet Adrian Doherty, known as AD, a man who lived in a shed for two years. It was, it was tough at times, do you know what I mean, but we came home. Where did you sleep? Uh, I still haven't mastered the art of sleeping lying down yet. I still just sleep, sitting up, I yeah, just did there. Because so you slept, slept sitting up for, so, for yeah. all that time? Yes. His new home is this caravan, just round the corner, donated to him by a local resident. So I call it my mansion and it's, yeah, to me, it's, yeah, it's amazing, do you know what I mean, yeah. An obsessive horror fan, AD's life has been more nightmare than dream. He struggled with drug addiction, and when the only offer of accommodation was in a hostel miles away with other addicts, staying in Jaywick seemed the safest option. People would say, well, if he won't move somewhere else, yeah. it's his own fault. Yeah, yeah, I can un I, and, and they are well entitled to that. You know, I, I've got mental health issues, and so the last thing I want to do is increase my depression even more. I've finally found somewhere where I'm, like, I'm happy, and I'd just kind of like to keep it that way. There's these new flats being built. There was a sign up saying for Jaywick residents only, so do you know what I mean? So yeah, I'm going to have to speak to the council about that. AD is not the only local pinning his hopes on one of the new houses being built by the council the first in decades, and only five out of the ten will be for social rents. We're being left behind. David Booth arrived in Jaywick nine years ago, homeless and on benefits through ill health. It was, as for many others, a place of last resort. There are some absolutely appalling houses that are still being lived in and rented at a stupidly high rent but it's supply and demand, and if the only place that people on benefits can reasonably attempt to keep up with their rent is Jaywick. That's why the landlords are getting away with it, because there's always going to be someone desperate for housing. It's a perfect and, storm, isn't it? And willing to put up with poor housing. There are decent landlords in Jaywick, David's for one. He says now he wouldn't live anywhere else. He's now trying to set up a community land trust to enable residents to build and manage affordable homes. I think the mood now is if those that are supposed to be doing this can't or won't, let's do it ourselves. We can ourselves make Jaywick a better place. The council is proud of this new development, but with no prosecutions of any landlords or any fines issued this year, it acknowledges it has to do more for existing tenants. The problem to the outside eye is what it looks like you've been left with in some small pockets of your area. Really vulnerable, yes, challenging people, but people with a lot of problems are literally being left in appalling conditions. The landlords are paid, nothing is being done about it. We do need to pursue those landlords. But why aren't you? We, we are, we do, we do work with them, but we need to do more. I accept more needs to be done. And I think it'd be great if we can get some of the, the people that are living in those conditions to, to flag up those properties. As I've said, we can't go knocking on doors saying, can we inspect your house? Give us a call, give the council a call. We can come along, Is we've got teams to that can do that. you're turning a blind eye because you know that these tenants can be difficult to rehouse? No, I don't think that's the case at all. I mean, we have had cases where um, tenants are difficult um, for whatever reason, but we don't abandon them, we do go back. Given that Jaywick has been in the sights of central government for 10 years at the top of its deprivation list, could there have been more help? Whichever government it is, the action should have been taken years ago to prevent it happening in the first place. When we, we say, are these um, scales of deprivation any use? Well, I, 
I think we've just answered the question. No, they're not. Daybreak is a beautiful place. When we go back, Joanne is packed up and ready to go, reluctantly. For now, she's going to live with family. For all the difficulties she's had here, leaving Jaywick behind, she says, is not easy. Well, earlier I spoke to Helen Barnard from the Joseph Rowntree Foundation. She said the problems in Jaywick are replicated across the country. I asked her what she thinks the next government should do about them. We need to see a step change in the number of social rented homes we're building. And crucially, we need to relink housing benefit to rents so that for people on low incomes, they are actually able to rely on housing benefit as like an anchor when they're in out of work or in low paid jobs and trying to cover high rents. So in practical terms, that would be a really important move straight away. Absolutely. It's one of the first things we would like to see any new government do is to make sure that local housing allowance, which is housing benefit in the private rented sector, is linked back to about the bottom third of rents in an area. And that would give people just a sense of security that they're going to get the help that all of us should be able to rely on when times are tough and we're trying to cover the rent. Well, in North London now is the Conservative Bob Blackman, who's been a member of the Housing Communities and Local Government Committee. Mr Blackman, every four years or so, the government comes out with its index of multiple deprivation. What is the point if the same communities are at the top of that deprivation index and nothing seems to be changing for the people living there? Well, I mean, clearly what we've got to try and do is get to a point whereby... Uh, people who are living in such dreadful conditions as your uh, programme has just highlighted uh, are supported and helped and assisted. And the landlords who keep people in those conditions uh, should be prosecuted because the reality is they are breaking the law. And it's up, obviously up to the local authorities to, to enforce uh, the, the law and the rules that operate to make sure those properties are brought up to a decent standard. I think the other issue that I think is important in this process is that we've clearly got to be building many more social uh, ho homes for rent uh, and affordable rent, uh, rent to that, and making sure as well that there are more properties available for people to buy but, uh, on the market that but, are affordable. But can I just return to the point, every four years in government sites are the same communities, not just Jaywick at the top, but other communities, there's very little movement in those top 20 areas of highest deprivation. What is the government doing other than collating well, these the, figures and pointing at those areas as most deprived? Yeah, what, what, what often happens, I, I, I remember very well when I, was, I, I led uh, Brent Council, um, we had uh, exactly this particular issue where we had areas of multiple deprivation we invested uh, through the government millions of pounds. Uh, we were very successful uh, in assisting people into employment and assisting people to uh, improve themselves. And they all moved out of the area to other areas and other people who were equally deprived moved in. Um, so you get this, unfortunately, this cycle of deprivation. What we have to do is break the cycle of deprivation yes, but sorry to by improving you, the conditions. But if, if Jaywick, for example, is at the top of that list three times in a row for a decade, you as government are not breaking that cycle of deprivation, not just in Jaywick, well, I'm, I'm but in, in the government. many communities. When uh, you were in so, government, the many communities no, who I'm feature not in government. very highly. I'm a backbencher within the Conservative Party and uh, your very party outspoken was in on housing issues for, and for the same issues. years that Jay was yes, at the I top of the through, list. Yes, and I, I piloted through the Homelessness Reduction Act, which is the biggest social reform in housing for 40 years in this country, to make sure that people that are homeless or threatened with being homeless are actually assisted uh, to provide a home of their own. I mean, that's one of the things I did personally uh, that took a year of my uh, effort to get through Parliament. Just very I think it's equally true that we do need to invest. We do need to invest in more social affordable housing right across this country and improve the lot of the people who are the poorest in society. And you do that through, through education, you do that through job creation, you do that through enabling them just to fulfil their proper potential. Very quickly, in 2015, the Conservative manifesto committed the party to building 200,000 new homes. The National Audit Office said this week uh, they found no evidence that any homes had been built. 
Well, that's not true because we built 225,000 uh, new homes last year. That's documented through um, the uh, communities and local government uh, uh, department of ministry now. Um, and quite clearly, we're, we've got an ambition to actually get 300,000 new homes a year being built in this country, which is another step change that we have to make. I'm sorry to keep uh, we'll interrupting do that you, Mr. For five Blackman. Years. Sorry, we don't have much time, but while you're here, I must ask the Muslim Council of Britain says there must be an investigation into Islamophobia in your party. Would you yourself cooperate with that investigation, given that you were accused, accused of endorsing Islamophobia on social media? Well, that's absolutely untrue and a blatant lie. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you I'm, retweeted I'm, by the Tommy way, Robinson. In the Parliament, I was, I was, uh, excuse me. Well, you you wouldn't go into to, to details like that. Uh, the fact is that uh, I retweeted an article in the Hindustan Times uh, that was about, unfortunately, a, a Hindu priest that had been murdered. Um, so yes, I retweeted that. I didn't check that it who had tweeted it in the first place, which was my fault, uh, for which I've apologised. Uh, I'm being quite clear, but I, I wasn't uh, aware because I was sitting in Delhi Airport at the time when I tweeted it. Mr Blackman, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. Uh, I'm joined now by John Healy, who is Labour's Shadow Secretary of State for Housing Communities. You've seen the film. Yeah. What one thing is Labour promising as we approach the election that would change the lives of those people? I think from the film you get a sense of the scale of the challenge that in 21st century England, people are living in such desperation. What it says is that communities like Jaywick simply can't thrive without greater government investment and government action. And there's been talk in the film and in your interviews about new social rented homes. In the last four years, only one new social rented home has been built in that council area. And I was Labour's last housing minister. In that last year, we built over 100. And if the last 10 years had seen that rate kept up, then everyone in your film and many of their neighbours would today be in decent and secure homes. So, and so that's there'll what... be a promise again of boom house building, and social housing. One big part of what's required to fix the housing crisis is a big council house building programme so that we build new social rented homes in this country, just like we did after the Second World War, in part to get rid of those slum private landlords but that we saw featured in that film. what would you do for, the, for those people, and not just in Jaywick, in deprived communities across the country? We, you heard the Joseph Rowntree Foundation saying a very practical step would be on local housing allowance, that basically uh, people who don't get their rent paid by all of their mm. benefit have to top up, they have to use food for, for money that they have earmarked for food or other basics. Would you change that? We have to relink housing benefit for people in private rented uh, homes to the cost of the homes. That's what it's designed to do. It was one of 13 separate cuts that the Conservatives and Lib Dems made in the so first we'll five years of the government. So then. that's one step. There's clearly other things we need to do on the benefit system. So end the four-year benefits freeze and end the five-week wait on universal credit. But in the in, in the end. This is largely going to be led by housing and it needs new central... But just to clarify, homes. are you saying you would reverse the changes to local housing allowance? We'll look to relink it, just as the argument goes, and you'll see that we'll in our... look to, you won't you'll, necessarily you'll see, commit to. You'll see the detail in our manifesto, but at the heart of this is housing, and it isn't just building new social rented homes and council housing at the heart of that, but it's also dealing with these private landlords that we saw in that film. And so people need stronger protection against eviction, so they had the confidence to complain and get repairs fixed, but also, of course, some controls on rents, new legal minimum standards... Would and, you lift the benefit cap, which and, would also and, help and, a lot and, of people? And much tougher, much tougher sanctions and enforcement. And we would One be word a, on lifting the benefit cap? We would be a government ready to step in and fix this failing housing market in the way the Conservatives haven't. And, yes, we'd look, we'd, look to, we'd look to lift the benefit cap Healy, as well. John Healy, thank you very much.